Hello, good afternoon everyone. I am Dr. Paturi Ram Sushrut. I am an MD Dermatologist in Hyderabad and I have started a page called Residerma. In this page, I want to help the resident PGs to cope up with the subject of dermatology. I also want to tell you that these videos are intended for all dermatology PGs of all the years. For the PGs who are attending the examination, please consider these videos as just brush up videos and the PGs from the first year should consider these videos as basic videos. See dermatology is a never ending and very enthusiastic subject. It has no boundaries. So don't confine yourself with these lectures. Please refer number of books. There are a lot of articles. Uh, and please go through the review articles before going to the exam try to make your own notes which is very helpful i sincerely wish that you like these videos please share these videos with your dermatology colleagues and also do comment in the comment section below regarding the topics which you want to learn through this way if you have any queries please mail me i'll be mentioning my personal mail id in the description box thank you in this seminar i will be mostly discussing about uh, dermatological aspects in detail and i'll touch systemic aspects of amyloidosis too but it will be very short and limited before going any further i would like to show references regarding this topic which i have used please go through them to find more details regarding this topic and there is one more which is there in the other slide okay this is also an important topic is a 10 marker question for all the postgraduate students so amyloid is derived from the latin word called as amylum it is coined by rodolf Wittgo when he was staining the uh, cells he has found it to be starch like when it was stained with iodine type of dyes so he coined the term amylum uh, the basic amyloidosis consists of group of disorders which are characterized by extracellular deposition of a proteinaceous substance which is called as amyloid. See, understand one thing, there are different types of amyloids but all of them have similar morphological properties and staining properties but their composition is different. There are almost more than 26 types of amyloids and I will be touching a few important of them which are very important for us to know. And let's find out regarding the ultra structure of amyloid protein. When you look through a normal light microscope, amyloid protein presents as eosinophilic amorphous substance. When you are looking through electron microscope, it presents as fibrils okay these fibrils are paired they are rigid and they are linear the length and the diameter of the fibrils varies depending on the substance which they are made from if you do a x-ray diffraction these fibrils demonstrate cross beta plated sheets so as we already spoke amyloid pre protein presents in anti parallel beta plated sheets so let's see how does it matter from a disease perspective these beta plated sheets which are anti parallel in direction are resistant to the macrophage engulfing and these are also resistant to the proteolytic damage which has which are caused due to enzymes coming to diagnostic perspective of you this beta plated sheets help the by retaining the congo red pigment which makes us diagnose the disease easily so what are the building blocks to this amyloid protein the initial building block is protofilaments many protofilaments form filaments and these filaments form the fibrils each amyloid is made up of two types of proteins a fibrillar protein and a non fibrillar protein let's talk about types of amyloids as i already said you there are more than 26 different types of amyloid substances which are part of amyloidosis 
but the most commonest ones are discussed here which are which we are really concerned about coming to the first one al type of amyloid see as we know immunoglobulin consists of heavy chains and light chains when uh, amyloid protein is uh, derived from the light chain it forms al type of amyloid if it is derived from heavy chain it forms ah type of amyloid coming to aa type of amyloid is formed due to a uh, protein which is produced by the liver during any inflammatory response it is a acute phase uh, reactant it is called as serum amyloid associated protein so if it is formed from this then it forms aa type of amyloid other type of amyloid is attr there is an uh, other protein called as trans thyretin which is a thyroxyl and retinol transporting protein again this is also uh, synthesized by the liver if the amyloid is formed from this it is attr the other one is a beta 2m this is derived from the microglobulin beta 2 which is a part of mhc protein this is most commonly seen in the patients with dialysis and other type is amyloid beta this is derived from beta microglobulins that are present in plaques of Alzheimer patients. In this slide, I am going to discuss what are the different causes of amyloid formation. Basically, there can be either increased production of the protein or else there can be constitutive synthesis of the protein or else there can be production of mutated proteins. All these proteins form a protein pool just as normal proteins and they form turn into just normal proteins with normal conformation but when there is a fibrillogenic microenvironment within the tissues they turn into amyloid conformation that is beta plated sheet parallel conformation these proteins then they form into fibrils and get deposited into the tissues after getting deposited into the tissues the body tries to proteolyze them by using multiple enzymes but as i said you they are resistant to the proteolysis they are resistant for macrophage damage and hence they form as amyloids and settle down in the tissues this is a pretty good slide which demonstrates the production of al type and aa type of amyloid uh, here we can see uh, al type of amyloid formation on this side whereas aa type of amyloid through this pathway here what basically is happening is there is some kind of stimulus which is causing excess production of immunoglobulins it might be either chronic infection or else some underlying malignancy there is excess production of immunoglobulins which is happening these excess produced immunoglobulins they go into the circulation they do their task but after the task completion they, when they are excess they get secreted through the kidneys when there is more they come and are deposited into the tissues so when they get deposited into the tissues if there is a fibrillogenic environment they turn to form into fibrils which are amyloid kind of fibrils these fibrils are taken up by macrophages these macrophages try to digest these proteins these proteins uh, escape the digestion get secreted back into the tissues as al type of amyloids now let's go into the aa type of amyloid there are multiple causes one might be a persistent acute inflammation or else a malignancy or else Mediterranean fever. The uh, acute phase reactant called as SAA is being produced from the liver. This goes into the circulation and again when it is very excess it comes and deposited into the tissues. Again when there is a fibrillogenic environment it gets converted into fibrils and macrophage tries to engulf it. It tries to digest it but after certain amount the digestion doesn't happen and it gets secreted back into the tissues as a type of amyloid this is the classification of cutaneous amyloidosis uh, it can be very broadly classified into localized cutaneous amyloidosis systemic amyloidosis with cutaneous involvement or some other disease causing cutaneous amyloidosis so when we go into further uh, of uh, localized cutaneous amyloidosis it is either hereditary or non-hereditary non-hereditary and it is again further divided into primary localized cutaneous amyloidosis 
secondary localized cutaneous amyloidosis so now let's discuss about primary localized cutaneous amyloidosis this is a non hereditary variant as we already discussed and there are major four subtypes one is macular which consists of major portion other is papular or lichen amyloidosis the third is mixed or maculopapular and the fourth is nodular it is most commonly seen in women and most common in people who live close to the equator and the papular and the mixed forms are common in asian women in this slide let's find out the pathophysiology behind papular and macular type of amyloidosis this is formed from the protein cytokeratin the reason is unclear the possible causes are increased mechanical friction which might be due to rough clothing or excess itching or sun exposure what is happening is with these triggers uh, there is apoptosis of basal keratinocytes and there will be uh, excess release of these cytokeratins as usual the macrophages come they try to digest it but it doesn't get digested it gets deposited into the tissues as ak type of amyloid and this usually uh, the deposits are always almost seen in the papillary dermis itself this is a very important point in the macular and papillary type of amyloidosis we see them in the papillary dermis itself uh, the rarest form is nodular type of amyloidosis which is formed due to al type of amyloid here the plasma cells produce uh, increased monoclonal antibodies most common in ga gamma globulinemias there is excess production of immunoglobulins that act as amyloid precursors as i already said the cause might be gamma globulinemias there is huge formation of immunoglobulins which is continuously happening so there can be a deposition throughout the dermis now let's get into the details about macular amyloidosis it presents as hyperpigmented macules which might be either confluent or in a rippled fa fashion they are almost always pruritic the commonest sites are upper back that is scapular area and extensor surfaces of the limbs they are most common in females and in early adulthood biphasic amyloidosis which consists of papillary lesions over the background of macular hyperpigmentation this is called as biphasic amyloidosis macular amyloidosis and pigmented type of uh, notalgia parasitica can overlap coming to the differential diagnosis it can be post inflammatory hyperpigmentation it can be due to atopic eczema or atrophoderma of pacem and pirelli coming to lichen amyloidosis lichen amyloidosis is also one of the commonest type of amyloidosis there are translucent persistent brownish gray discrete pruritic papules which are usually seen on the extensor surfaces commonest site is shins and anterior thighs or else they can be seen also on the forearms at the onset uh, the lesions are usually unilateral but over the time they become bilateral they might coalesce to form plaques here the differential diagnosis is hypertrophic lp or LSE. Histopathology of macular and papillar type of amyloidosis. Amyloid deposits are confined to the papillary der dermis itself. Coming to the changes above downwards, there is hyperkeratosis, acanthosis, elongation of the retail ridges. There is amorphous uh, deposits in the papillary dermis. When it comes to macular type of amyloidosis, there is pigmentary incontinence there are multiple special stains which are used to identify amyloidosis and the skin pass stain it is positive and other is thioflavin t where it presents as bright yellow to greenish staining and the most important and specific is congo red here we see apple green bifringence and dichromism these words are very important the apple green bifringence is seen by using polarized light and uh, this is a stain of toradin blue where the deposits are seen as light blue the other two different stains are methyl violet and chrysyl violet 
where they show the metachromasia. Coming to the dermoscopic findings of macular amyloidosis, it presents as central hubs. Uh, from these central hubs, there are white to brown uh, radiating streaks which are usually present. In lichen amyloidosis, they present as whitish scar like centers which are surrounded by either brownish dots or as whitish dots. Nodular amyloidosis This is very rare condition. It is most commonly seen in females, elderly groups, most commonly with cancers, uh, which might be uh, gamma globulinemias or else the patients who are on dialysis. This, present, this presents as pinkish or yellowish waxy nodules or infiltrated plaques which might be present over the face, trunk and extremities. The skin is usually atrophic over them and the most commonest type of amyloid proteins which are present are AL or A beta 2. As I said AL is might be due to gamma globulinemias and A beta 2 M is may be due to in patients with chronic di uh, dialysis. There are 50% chances of nodular amyloidosis getting progressed into systemic type of amyloidosis. Here the differential diagnosis of this type of nodules erythema nodosum, nevus lipomatosis and uh, cutaneous lymphomas, most commonly T cell lymphomas. Histopathology of nodular amyloidosis here we see the epidermis is atrophic. There is lot a lot of amyloid deposition which is present in the dermis and even going into the subcutaneous plane. Uh, the structures like blood vessels and uh, sweat glands also uh, consist of the amyloid pigment. Uh, lymphoplasmocytic uh, infiltrates are usually present in the periphery of the deposits. There are two rare variants of primary localized cutaneous amyloidosis. One is bullous amyloidosis there are high chances this bullous amyloidosis can go into systemic amyloidosis and these uh, in this uh, the presentation is the bullae are in intermingled with papillar lesions here we can see papillar lesions and here we can see bullae on histopathology we see amyloid deposits the other rare variant of primary localized cutaneous amyloidosis is amyloidosis cutis dyschromica. The postulated cause is there is the patient gets exposed to excess UV radiation which might cause DNA repair defects. The amyloid which is most commonly present is from the cytokeratin and the amyloid is AK type. The disease is usually seen in early age individuals. There is widespread reticular hyperpigmentation with hypopigmented macules on large body surface areas, most commonly over the trunk and extremities. Uh, itching may or might not be present. On histopathology, there are small foci of am amyloid closely under the epidermis. There are multiple differential diagnoses that is dyschromatosis universalis hereditaria, generalized dowling, dowling digos, uh, xeroderma pigmentosum, poikilodermatous amyloidosis. There are several causes and find out how to differentiate that will make up your answer and will get. This is a slide which shows uh, approach to patient with dyschromias and uh, go through this and here finally we find our amyloidosis cutis dyschromica that was all regarding uh, primary localized cutaneous amyloidosis now let's get into secondary localized cutaneous amyloidosis here there is some underlying cause which might be either skin tumor or uh, inflammatory lesions this is causing deposition of insignificant microscopic deposits of amyloid into the tissue and the most commonest type of uh, amyloid uh, here is derived from the cytokeratins so it is ak type and the most commonest conditions are sweat gland tumors, pilomatricoma, dermatofibroma, seborrheic keratosis, solar keratosis, porokeratosis, Bowman's disease and basal cell carcinoma. So uh, till here we have discussed the non-hereditary variants of localized cutaneous amyloidosis. Uh, the hereditary variants are pretty similar but they get transmitted usually in autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance and the uh, amyloid protein is most commonly through cytokeratin itself or else by apolipoprotein A4 uh, and the commonest variants which can be inherited are 
macular or papular type of amyloidosis here we come to the next broader criteria that is systemic amyloidosis uh, it can be divided as non hereditary or hereditary variants uh, now we discuss non hereditary systemic amyloidosis with skin involvement there are multiple causes one is majorly due to cancers like myelomas uh, waldenstrom disease and uh, heavy chain disease and bench jones plasma uh, plasma cytoma here what happens is the most commonest is uh, immunoglobulin light chains are the precursors and the type of amyloid is al type of amyloid the extra cutaneous manifestations are usually in the nephropathy and cardiomyopathy neuropathy and intestinal involvement whereas other cause is of the secondary systemic amyloidosis is chronic inflammation which is happening either may be due to inflammation or tumors there is excess production of saa and the type of involvement is aa uh, type of amyloid which is being excessively produced again here we have nephropathy hepatosplenomegaly and gi disturbances next uh, it may be either caused due to secondary hemodialysis associated systemic amyloidosis here beta 2 microglobulins are the most commonest ones which are being causing and the type of amyloid is a beta 2m and here the patient presents with musculoskeletal related that is carpentinal syndrome bone cysts and destructive arthropathy the most commonest cutaneous features in these all these patients are onychodystrophy bulle PTK, uh, flexural involvement is present, there is beefy tongue, gingival hyperplasia can be present. These are all the commonest fighting, uh, findings in patients with uh, uh, systemic amyloidosis having cutaneous involvements. Uh, these are hereditary systemic amyloidosis with cutaneous involvements. And uh, the type of amyloids are hereditary transferritin amyloidosis, that is excess secretion of ATTR type of amyloid. The cutaneous presentations will be atrophic scars, non-healing ulcers, and petechiae, whereas extracutaneous manifestations are peripheral and autonomous neuropathy, carpentinal syndrome, cardiomyopathy, and nephropathy. In patients with hereditary APOE1 amyloidosis, A APOE1 is the amyloid which is excessively produced and which is present. They present as maculopapular lesions and petechiae and the extracutaneous manifestation is cardiomyopathy cystatin c amyloidosis uh, the amyloid is called aces and uh, usually there are no cutaneous symptoms but there will be multiple cerebral hemorrhages as extracutaneous finding meritoja syndrome the amyloid is agel and uh, cutaneous findings are cutis laxa pruritus petechiae ecchymosis hypertrichosis and alopecia whereas the extra cutaneous findings are corneal dystrophy neurological involvement and carpentinal syndrome this slide shows most commonest uh, hereditary systemic diseases which manifest with MS, systemic amyloidosis and uh, with cutaneous involvement uh, the most commonest ones are McElwell syndrome and traps the type of amyloid is a type of amyloid the cutaneous and extra cutaneous features are given here so please go through them once coming to the treatment options uh, amyloidosis needs multidisciplinary approach in all variants of amyloidosis pruritus is often a major problem leading to further skin irritation and more damage and more amyloid deposition so anti-pruritic treatment should be the important component in treatment of the amyloidosis so topical uh, medications which can be used are corticosteroids which can be either given as occlusive dressings or intralesional injections phototherapy with uh, uva and pua has been shown helpful dimethyl sulfoxide is one substance which helps in reducing amyloid pigments but uh, topical application again it's little questionable here is a flow chart uh, in a local case uh, conservative management is with either topical steroids or DSMO. In a localized condition, you can either give corticosteroid injections or do a surgical excision, dermabrasion, or skin grafting. Most commonest lasers which can be used in this is uh, a CO2 laser. Uh, it helps in vaporizing the skin and it gives good results. Uh, in a widespread case, we usually choose uh, phototherapy with uh, UVB and followed by PUVA is also a very good option. Amyloidosis cutis dyschromica, we can try the uh, drugs like azitretin, DMSO, um, which might be helpful. 
a little more insights into the systemic treatment dmso can be given at a dosage of 2 to uh, 3 to 20 grams per day and uh, oral retinoids like acetretin can be given at 0.5 mg per kg per day over half year there is good remission in lichen and biphasic type of amelogenesis Surgical treatments, as I said, you, you can do excision, split thickness, grafting, dermabrasion, uh, shave excision is also a good option. Pure touch and cautery, okay, okay, not that great, but uh, using laser, CO2 laser is the best option in case of like an amyloidosis or biphasic also. Treatment of systemic amyloidosis with cutaneous involvement. This needs a multidisciplinary approach with a dermatologist, oncologist, dermatologist, and a plastic surgeon. Important point is and identifying the underlying cause. All efforts should be made to slow down or stop the progression of the disease. Immunosuppression plays a major role. In patients with metarian fever, anakindra and congestion can be used. In patients with traps plus amyloidosis may be treated with uh, TNF. Uh, inhibitors and uh, interleukin 1 agonists ivig and plasma exchange are options and in patients where there is alpha beta 2 amyloidosis that is mostly due to hemodialysis the treatment should be targeted to improve the renal function and stop hemodialysis as early as possible thank you for watching this video